First guest of the day is it's uh, Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival week. We bring in Mary Beth Blair once again, MB Squared. How are you? Doing great. Every once in a while, the the temptation uh, to call you Mary Beth Kisner comes back because it is Kisner Communications, and I That's once right. knew you as Mary Beth Kisner. You did, and a lot of people still yeah, pull call that me mic that. Close, closer to you there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people still do. Yeah. yeah. I answer to both. Oh, well, I prefer cool. the new name, but it's it's it's, been, it's worked out well for you. <laughs> I mean, but. not prefer, but you know, it's worked out. I well. like them both. Yeah, good yeah. family out yeah. there. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, Susan Snowden. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. How you been? Great. Busy uh, planning a good week, and I listen to the weather. It's going to be beautiful. So good. You know, finally, some years oh, you we get, got a good year. <laughs> yeah, some years you get rain, and then you cold? get this one. We've yeah, been, we've cold. had it all. We've had snow. Yes. When was it the last time it snowed? Oh, back in the, do I have to tell that? Yeah. Back in, back in the the early 80s. Mm. Oh, I missed that At one. the Air Guard. They okay. had the uh, grand ball came out and there was a dusting and it was cold. I, I actually remember there had to have been a couple of years after that. My daughter always danced in the parade when she was in you know middle and high school and with her dance troupe. And I can remember it snowing and being freezing some days. Like we went from years where they were sweating and we had to have water right. bottles going through the parade for them as the dance moms. And there they went through years where it was so cold. They had earmuffs and gloves. And so we've had all the extremes and it's just so nice when God blesses us with yeah. a but, beautiful weekend of weather, you know. But statistically, mm -hmm. uh, the third week in October is supposed to be the best weekend of the year. It is and supposed the, to be a premier I, fall weekend. Yeah, that's right. yes. the, the weekend, the reason I know that is when we first started our pig roast 30 or 40 years ago, we went to the head of the weather service, said, give me the best weekend, and they came the third weekend of October. Wow. And we had it that time until mm -hmm. I became county commissioner, and then we had to move it to the second. But I always begrudge having to go to the second because I knew the third weekend was yeah. going to be the best. Wow. I, had, I had no idea that was statistically the best. It was, yeah. 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 Well, back in the day, they picked the date because the uh, Apple Butter Festival is the second yeah. weekend. And right. there was a camaraderie between the two counties, and they did not want to impinge mm -hmm. upon each yeah. other. Um, and we've cooperated throughout the years. I've, I've been to both, and many times, you know, that year, the back-to-back -back yeah. weekends, and it's really quite a celebration it's it it's is really and something. they are different they each have very different much things mm -hmm. very, so very different. we are excited that it is our 45th anniversary our sapphire anniversary mm. yeah. is that what 45 years is sapphire it is Th thus our logo uh, little modification this year with the sapphire jewel that's on the bottom of the uh, logo this year you can see it i don't know if you can see it on my right there but we added that oh, mm. and we added some blue into the logo for this year we've had a lot of people ask that and mm. so there's the answer to the mystery of why we updated the logo just for this year for the 45th year because it is our sapphire anniversary are there plans already for the 50th is there like a are we looking out that far into the future for the big 50 let us get through 45 yeah, yeah. we've already we've already talked about next year mm -hmm. and we're in some infant planning stages but that is a biggie so yeah yes. 50 is big so it sounds like you are kind of looking at it already i am <laughs> okay. Always looking forward. Yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah. But it, it's exciting. We have uh, several legacy people, and we call those legacies because we have, for instance, oh. Abigail, uh, our maid elect. Abigail McBee is uh, going to be our maid elect. She will be Queen Pomona the 45th. She started out as a child, as a jester. Mm -hmm. She's helped throughout the years uh, with the mm -hmm. entire it's festival. A volunteer, yeah. And uh, she was a junior maiden, and now she will be our queen. Um, several of our minor court members have family members that have either, either been integral parts of the festival or their parents were members of the minor court. So we're mm -hmm. starting down that road where we have legacy folks mm -hmm. coming back yeah, to we, support. Didn't we recently have a, a queen whose mother was queen? And, and yes, she Olivia was Travis and her mother, Michelle, was, was, was queen. That was the first ever mm -hmm. mother-daughter. Was that two years ago? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. Hey, credit for the memory here. Wow. Ben. I'm impressed. Very impressive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and her mother, her grandmother, uh, Joan Bragg, former magistrate, mm -hmm. was also a board member. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, lots so of heritage. Lots of heritage here in the county, which is why we have the Apple Harvest Festival. Mm -hmm. We never want to forget where we come from. Yeah. We, now, you too, were you involved uh, as a child? Were you involved in the Apple Harvest Festival, both of you? I was. My aunt, Marge Van Meter, was an original member of the founding board. Mm -hmm. 
1979, when they had zero finances, I got pressed into service. So I did everything from um, cleaning to set up to tear down and making floats uh, by hand uh, and everything in between. So what year was that? 1979. That was a good year for me because as a <clears throat> Pirates and Steelers fan, we won the World Series <laughs> with the We Are Family oh, and the Super yeah, Bowl. That yeah, year. That's good. That's it was good. a good year for me. I graduated from high school. Yeah. So it, I've been at this for quite a while. Yeah. yeah, you've done a good job. Thank you. This is uh, always every year something that the entire community looks forward to. Is it a, a big tourist attraction? Do we get many people from outside of uh, the Eastern Panhandle who come here? I would say increasing every year, we are receiving more outside tourism dollars. Um, I'm sure that the county could tell you that the, that because they've told me the highest revenue weekend for hotel motel tax is our apple harvest weekend. So we do get a lot of visitors uh, coming in from out of town. It's a great family event. We have so many free things that you can do. Um, tickets are something that we have to do mm -hmm. for certain events. Yeah. Uh, but our coronation is free. This year we have a new event on Friday uh, at Parsons Ford, the Fast Lane Meet and Greet, yeah. where everybody should come out because if they do, they're going to receive racing cards signed by our celebrities. They're going to get to see a race car, mm -hmm. a food truck. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got lots of things going on all for free. Mm -hmm. um, we have so much going on at the fairgrounds carnival rodeo we've yeah. added a lot you mentioned celebrities who are you talking about Susan? Um, frankie munez is our uh, grand marshal mm -hmm. frankie was well known for uh, um, malcolm, malcolm in the middle, in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and cody banks secret agent uh he's a he's a film star and also still acts but the unique thing about him is he became a nascar driver mm -hmm. um, where he met our own sports celebrity christian rose mm -hmm. and interestingly enough they both raced for ford right. um so hence the parsons ford hence the right. parsons ford connection mm -hmm. and um, christian is actually his he, he will be they will be transporting one of his race cars to parsons ford that day and we will see it throughout the weekend it'll mm -hmm. be at the fairgrounds on sunday for pe for kids to come out and look at it and get their picture with it but it's the one i believe he said he told me that it won or it, it placed really well at two different racing series so one was talladega i forget what the other one was i have to look that up i'm not a yeah. racing car yeah. uh expert it's so okay. but yeah so that'll be fun i mean any kind of a race car is cool to look at uh, is, speaking yeah. of being cool to look at i've got to ask you about the apple on your lapel oh yeah um actually that is from my aunt marge she would wear mm. this and i have about one that i wear a day uh -huh. um and they're mostly vintage so i yeah. try to sport the colors so to speak um and remind everyone that it's apple harvest yeah. weekend we get quite those. Eye well thank and, you yeah. and we get those uh the, the really cool one of the events that is people look forward to so much or the women look forward to it's the queen pomona's brunch on friday and so every year there's a new apple pin that is given to all of the attendees of that luncheon and so for many people especially like susan i've only been involved since 20 18 2017 2018 on the board but i have all my pins yeah. from all the years and they're different each year and everyone always looks it's a you know exciting moment to see what will this year's apple pin look like mm -hmm. but that's been a tradition um that a lot of the women have looked forward to yeah. collecting those so and, and you know we have traditions but at the same time um with the way things have changed over the years and especially financially and coming through covid um, we've changed our events. So uh -huh. we have some tried and true events. Um, our sports breakfast became the Bob Elmer pancake breakfast that's uh -huh. at the youth fairgrounds. Um, but we've also added things, one of right. which is the fall classic. Yeah. We've got how many? Uh... We had six teams this year and I, uh, they had a great, this has been their great best weekend for weather. They've gotten washed out before and been cold, but it was beautiful. Um, my, the, I got, I was there for opening ceremonies when, um, Abigail threw out the opening pitch and it was so beautiful. They had, um, there were 11 games. They were all extremely competitive. And they also incorporated this year inviting college coaches in to scout and, you know, kind of look at the, the talent from the baseball players. The team that won last night was uh, Team Empire. It was Team Empire and Team York in the final. And Empire, or yes, Team Empire, which was the gold team 
pulled it out. And um, so congratulations to those. I yes. assume the teams were named after apples? They are. Yeah. They are. So we had Empire, York, Fortune, Rome, Freedom, and Liberty. And they were an amalgamation of the various high school yes, teams? Yes, so around? we had yeah, okay. everything from yeah. Washington, Hedgesville, Musselman, Jefferson, Martinsburg, Spring Mills. We even had some from neighboring uh, schools. We had uh, Grace Academy. Um, we even, we had Airborne Christian Academy f- here locally, but it was great. We, we pulled them in from all different yeah. areas. Those, those uh, that played had to have a, maintain a certain grade point average, so it was an honor for them to play based on them being a good student athlete. So that happened. Also last week we had, which we mentioned before when we were here the other day, our Ruby and Rhinestone event for the ladies, and it was very well was attended. Fun. went very well. So those are kind of like kickoff pre-festival week events, but this week is going to be... A big now, week. has Brittany Senate given up the crown yet? Not yet. No. Uh, but does Brit- she still wear it? I, I she know there's some kind of there's a <clears throat> politeness there that goes no, on there no, or whatever. There right. She will give a farewell address uh, Thursday evening at Hollywood Casino uh, at our Royal Gala, where our Deputy Commissioner of Agriculture will speak, uh, Amy Miner, and some other folks. Mm-hmm. And we will recognize our honored West Virginian at that time and, and make those announcements. But she gives her farewell address there and then hands over the crown Friday evening. Right, so that's her last official wearing of her crown. What and a great representative she's been. She, she has. has been amazing. She's exactly like we said the other day, someone that she she's exactly what we want as our ambassador for the festival. Yeah. And then Friday night, as we said, it's a free event. It's such a beautiful event. If anyone is listening and they've never had a taste of other events other than the parade, most people grow up going, that was my experience. Yeah. I wasn't involved behind the scenes, but I grew up, it was, a family tradition to attend the parade it was just you know we never missed that we had a whole block we would lay out our blankets and you know all of my cousins would come to the event and we it was just a wonderful gathering so the coronation Friday night when when Abigail is crowned and Brittany is no longer you know she will be giving up that that reign um, that's where she'll the like you said the deputy um, commissioner of agriculture will actually crown her and then Abigail actually reads from a scroll and she declares the opening mm-hmm. of the festival. It's just a very um, elegant ceremony, and it's it's very educational, too, just with what is shared. And even at the gala Thursday night, um, the Deputy Commissioner of Agriculture, mm-hmm. Amy Miner, will give a state of agriculture presentation or address to tell us what the agriculture environment is in our state at this time especially in the eastern panhandle again this festival as it's fun and there's all kinds of activities but at the heart of it it's to pay, make people aware of the that our roots run deep in berkeley county with apple heritage and an opportunity to plug tomorrow we'll be doing a candidates forum at the berkeley county commission meeting room between eight and noon but from eight forty-five to nine thirty, the two agricultural commissioner candidates oh, good. will be there. Mm-hmm. Of course, the incumbent and the challenger, the incumbent Kent Leonhardt and the challenger Deborah Stiles. That'll be at 845. If you can't make it to the county commission chamber meeting room at 410 West Stephen, you can watch the whole 8 to noon right here on TV 10. I will stream it live to Facebook and it'll be on AM 740 and FM 1065 as well. Mm-hmm. Susan, we mentioned the coronation on Friday, but there's other things going on on Friday as well. Oh, right. yes. There are. And mm-hmm. we've already mentioned the ladies brunch mm-hmm. and while the ladies are there everyone else can go out to the fast lane meet and greet mm-hmm. right um, and then bake your apple pies it's yes. time to enter friday. those on friday mm-hmm. uh, because those will be judged on saturday mm-hmm. um, and then everybody loves a parade so get up after thursday uh, friday evenings apple pie baking and entry yeah and head out to Get your place to watch the parade. Right. Now, I will say we uh, we've worked with the city and law enforcement to try to streamline the parade. Yes, we're getting complaints about the new parade route, but you know sometimes you have to make some changes. And when the city requests and and has some yeah. uh, suggestions on ways that it would help them mm-hmm. and their personnel, right. you go with it because we do very much appreciate their support. And so that parade will start. Um, and we'll kick off, but let's not forget, get there early and cheer on those people in the apple trample because right. WVU Medicine makes that a priority, right. and they want people to be healthy, so walk, run, yeah, whatever, participate in the apple trample, right. and then yeah. watch the parade. And then... Oh, yes, the rodeo. Go, and go down to the fairgrounds and see the rodeo and all the and we, vendors. I know that we have... 
packed out our vendors. We have both the commercial building, the goat barn. We have outdoor exhibits, outdoor. all full of different types of vendors. We have food trucks, a carnival, 10 to 8 or 10 to 6 on Saturday, 10 to 4 on Sunday. As Susan said, the rodeo at 4 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and the, the pancake breakfast is both Saturday and Sunday from 8 to noon. And then Sunday also we will have all the fun contests, the apple eating contest, the apple peeling contest. Our baby apple seed will be um, revealed and announced. We'll crown those little mister and miss and all those little queens and kings on Sunday, as well as live entertainment for all area schools and dance troops will be Sunday afternoon. Um, it, it's it's it, where at the, the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds. Yeah. fairgrounds. And yes. don't forget the really important thing: we have a lot of our orchardists are entering the guess that apple, oh. best apple. Yeah. You'll see some agricultural displays down there. It's really important, especially for small children. Yeah. They love it. Um, and so apples will be everywhere. Uh, photography contest featuring yeah. apples. Uh, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, of uh, course. Beautiful artistic our work, and mm -hmm. our quilt will yeah. be raffled off. But here's the thing. Whether you participate in one thing or everything, get your family, get your yeah. friends, come down, do something, yeah. because it's going to be a beautiful weekend, mm -hmm. and everyone works so hard. I want to thank all of our volunteers, because we have no employees. Mm -hmm. Everyone is a volunteer, mm -hmm. and I want to really thank the folks that sponsor us, not the least of which is our presenting sponsor, sponsor BCT. Yes, um, we couldn't do it without them. We really need their financial and people support yeah. um, and the organizations and folks that do provide us with people power. Do you have a competition for painting a bowl of apples, which is the most basic of painting skills that everyone who paints starts with a bowl of apples? No. Oh, you gotta, you got to <laughs> put that in there. Okay. No. Best painting of a bowl of apples. New event next year. Or an apple itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because there's a lot of different apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that the uh, uh, Berkeley Springs are having the apple butter contest. Yes. I know there's friendly competition between the two. Uh, Bill, have you ever stirred the apple butter pot? I I have in years past. When I, yes, it's a lot of apple butter. It's a lot of apple. Uh, is there any sense of the popularity, relative popularity between the two? I mean, I they're both popular yeah. for different reasons, right. and. I think that um, Berkeley Springs is wall to wall crafters and 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 that's the main I mean they have entertainment and they have all kinds of things but that that is the it's a street vendor yes. fair, fair. and so we have a, a lot of ours is a little different in that we have yeah. more four days event of different things. too we right. have <clears throat> multiple 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 there's is events. one day sure yeah. uh, theirs is a one day outdoor event ours is now not just one week but creeping into the week two before weeks. Uh, yeah. two weeks of events and we have a lot of a lot more diversity in what right. you can choose to attend and, and participate so in. it just depends on what you're looking for people love to go i know a lot of people have to, i've read where you have to bus in to the yeah. actual main yeah. downtown main street area to get to that so they do a fantastic job i think if you can't if you have to choose one that you're going to do great choosing either one. And we would love yeah. to have those who love the apple butter come to the apple yeah. harvest. We will have, I know that there's always a 4-H group down at the festival, the fairgrounds, um, who actually are making apple butter and let people try stirring it. So mm -hmm. that we do have some folks that are doing that. And I know that are selling it. There are, there are local groups selling apple dumplings and candied and caramel apples. And so, and we also have a really nice display from one of the orchardists um, of very varieties of apples so you can come and see all the yeah. apples they do apple tasting you can get apples 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 in different directions <laughs> so and we do the apple pie auction sunday we we sell apple pies that were in the contest so yeah lots of great things there's just something for everyone and uh, can you still buy the apple pies from yes. the yes. apple pie yes. contest you can. that's what we just said and it will sell out yeah. early on Sunday, if not by Saturday evening. They pay some big money for the champion pies, but I remember getting a pie for like, this is in the 90s, for like $5. Five Somebody bucks. didn't win, but they were, it was right. amazing. It was still a great pie. Right, yeah. right. And you Where got to keep the pie pan. <laughs> Back in that day. Back in those days. They were donated by Corning. Oh, is that right? Oh, and, now, they were. and now we do more of like a pan that's a disposable, disposable pan. Yeah. So 
Makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Pie pans can be and we expensive. Ha- we do have a commercial division that started last year in our apple pie baking contest. So we have a student um, category. We have, you know, a general population category. And then we have a commercial division. Uh, actually, and they uh, they did a really tiny um, age one called, I think they call them the spuds or something. It's so cute. But they But the commercial division yeah. competes in like, local farm markets who sell yeah. apple pies yeah. they compete last year our winner was spring valley so it'll be interesting to see who wins the commercial division the this battle year. of the farm market yeah. yeah i um i have to commend you to you you're phenomenal ambassadors for the uh, apple harvest site your enthusiasm mm-hmm. is is uncontained it's just wow. really it's fun nice. yeah. yeah are there it's many uh, orchards still growing apples in the eastern panhandle still active there are and Usually, and I have not checked, but I'm pretty sure that Kearneysville Experiment Farm will be doing yes. tours. So head down there if you want something mm-hmm. educational. Um, it is a jewel in the eastern yeah. panhandle that people don't mm-hmm. realize is there. I remember going out there in the 90s as a reporter covering that. And wow. so people really should yeah. participate and go. But if you just go to any farm market, uh, whether it be Spring Valley, Oars, Taylor's, Pick one, mm-hmm. go, and they have our program available. They've got mm-hmm. our rack cards available, and they will be glad to talk to you. And yeah. I know that some folks have even stopped along the road when they've seen someone in an yeah. orchard, and several times it's been the orchard owner him- themselves that talk to mm-hmm. the folks and explain it to them. So come out and have a great time. You know what they say, an apple a day. Keeps the, keeps the doctor away. away. Good to see both of you. Thank you so much for coming in. Yes. Thank you for having us. Thanks, folks. Uh, I think I'll I, I see you again later Thursday, this week. you'll have made elect uh, Abigail McBee as well as Courtney Funk, who's our vice president and coordination chair. Very nice. We are back with more Eastern Panel Talk. Uh,